Greetings, this is Time Rider, and the last time you saw this, I was dropping it into a jar of stripper. And I'm sure a lot of people wondered why I did that. Well, partly, I'm just in a place in my modeling where I don't want to do ordinary work. I want to do the best work that I can do, and I didn't think that this was a reflection of that. And here's why. It may be tough to see. But the wheels were too big, and they made the car sit very high. I kind of hit it with a little photography, but trust me when I say it just didn't look right. Now the paint was not too bad, but there were some areas like this one on the hood where there was some pebbling. And I don't want to do just okay work, I want to do the, like I said, the best work that I can. And lastly, there was something on the windshield and the rear window. Not sure what it was, but I felt like I needed to do something to try to alleviate whatever it was that was causing that staining. So anyway, I started over. Well, clearly I don't have to show you how I got the casting apart because <laughs> it's already apart. So right away after I got it out of the stripper, I went to work on it with a wire wheel. You know, one thing about red, and, and red is kind of funny because I think sometimes it looks really good on a casting of this size, and then other times it doesn't. And I just don't think that this was one of the times that red looked very good. So I can tell you right now that I'm not going to paint it red again. And like I usually do, I'm going to follow up the wire wheel with some 4 aught steel wool because you can't prepare the casting too much. And if you are diligent, you wind up with something that looks like this. Now, I've been doing this since November, and I think that there has been a progression of skills in both the making of the videos and of the castings. And one thing that I've tried to do all along is to stretch myself a little bit here and there and not be afraid to try new things. Don't get me wrong, I love doing restorations and they are the meat and potatoes of this hobby. But I think that sometimes you have to go a little bit beyond that and you have to try new things. So in this case, one of the things I'm doing is trying a new paint. But before I get into that, let's address the windshield. Now I had read or seen on another YouTube video or something that if uh, I soak the windshield in brake fluid, if there's some type of foreign material on it, I can probably get it off that way. So that's what I did. And it did clean off whatever it was that was on there. Even at that, I decided that I probably ought to give it a good sand to get rid of all the imperfections. And I did that off camera, uh, starting with 400 grit and then working my way down to 2500 grit. And then I soaked the, uh, or dipped the windshield in pledge. I decided too that I wanted to change the color of the interior. And so I painted it flat black. I've always liked the flat colors for interiors more than the gloss, at least the semi-gloss. Uh, the interior shouldn't be too shiny, it never looks right. So I'm sure you guys have watched Austin over at uh, Diecast Resurrection use Createx paint, and that's the brand of paint that I purchased. And I decided to paint this blue at the suggestion of a subscriber actually kind of a long time ago. I have to admit that this is not the first time that I painted this, and I'm also painting it without primer, you may notice. Uh, the first time I painted it, things did not go very well. 
I over thinned the paint and got some runs. Uh, but this time, I think I got it right. After the first coat, I went ahead and painted some details on the model. Uh, headlights, taillights, things of that nature. And then I put a coat of clear over the top of it. And the clear that I used was actually uh, from the Redline shop. Another first for me. Something you'd probably shoot over Spectroflame is uh, my guess. But I know that the urethanes give a nice hard finish and I really wanted to give it a try and maybe get into it a little bit more. I will say too, it just, it gives it a really nice shine and you can see it starting to develop here. I literally let the casting sit for like three days and then I painted on the black portions using a semi-gloss black. Now the reason I did this after I had clear coated is because if I put this black on before I clear coat, well then I might as well just use gloss. And now it's time for some reassembly. And we'll put the windshield in. And then it was right around here somewhere I think I realized I forgot to take the screws out. I'm old, what can I say? Which brings us back to where we started before the stripper. And I don't think it was a bad job, it just wasn't good enough. But anyway, let's see where it wound up. A little bit different wheels. Sits a little lower to the ground. I do love the paint. There you have it. The Matchbox 3E Porsche 911 Turbo Custom. Stick around if you'd like for an episode of The Bench. This is Time Rider, and I'll leave the light on for you. Hey everybody, thanks for sticking around for this episode of The Bench, where I share with you deep secrets and useless thoughts. Hey everybody, remember I said I was going to be doing a restoration here on this 1E and 2D Mercedes truck and trailer, and they're getting ready for paint. And then I was watching Mike Espo do a Bonnie and Clyde death car, and I really liked that four-door sedan, so I ordered one, and I have a special project that I'm going to be working on with that. And last but not least, uh, a 15D Volkswagen 1500. Uh, we just call them bugs over here in the US of A. Uh, and I'm going to be doing uh, a custom on that. And then don't forget this Saturday, uh, we have the consortium or co-op of international die cast guys. And we're going to be doing some luxury cars. So mark your calendar and please come and watch. 
Anyway, that's it. This is Time Rider. If you like what you saw, please share and subscribe and click the little thumbs up. And everybody have a great week. And I'll see you soon.